So to give each student a slightly different problem, an online homework system randomly generates numbers between 351 and 358 for a particular problem. And these values are spread evenly over the range of values and are rounded to one decimal place. So this spread evenly piece is important because that tells us that this will be a uniform random variable. And so first we want to draw the distribution. And so we know that the uniform distribution has a lower bound of 351 and an upper bound of 358. So I've just defined that here in R. I'm going to run this, these two lines here. So I'm going to highlight it, run this. So I've defined my lower bound and upper bound. Now I'm going to plot the distribution. So basically I have a range of values from A to B and I'm going to plug those into the D uniform command to get my basically my x-axis and my y-axis values. Then I will plot the values. So first off we see just the line of values at about one seventh and then if I run this line of code, then it'll just shade in this region so it looks a little bit nicer. So this is then the uniform distribution. I can zoom this in and I can see that from 351 to 358, this looks like a uniform distribution where the height of my distribution is 1 7th. So if I look at what that value is, I can run it here. And I get 0.142857. And sure enough, that is exactly where my box looks like it is uh, the height of my box is. All right, so that's what our uniform distribution looks like. Now, if we want to find the probability that the value will be within one standard deviation, the mean, we first have to calculate the mean and standard deviation. So I've ran this code here, I've written this code, and basically this is just doing the math in R. So A plus B over two is the average for a uniform distribution. I've already defined A and B, so I can run this section and I can see that the average is 354.5. I want to run all of this so I can define the new variable E dot X. And for the standard deviation, this is just the square root of the variance, which is B minus A squared divided by 12 and taking the square root of that. So the value is actually 2.02. .02. And then I want to run this whole section so I can redefine this variable SDX. Because if I want to find the probability that X falls between these two values, then I need to first find the probability that um, X is less than the upper bound. So my mean time plus my standard deviation. And that's going to be 0.78867. And then I need to subtract off the area below the lower bound that I'm calculating. So the expectation minus the standard deviation. And then this, so this value is actually equal to 0.211324. So if I run this all together, I find that the area between the expectation minus the standard deviation and the expectation plus the standard deviation. So the area that is within one standard deviation of the mean is 0 0.5773503. All right, so I can also then calculate this next probability, which the question is, suppose one student gets a rounded value of 352.3, what is the chance another student gets that exact same value? So if the rounding takes place on the hundredths place, that means that values like 352.25, 352.26, 352.27, all the way up to 3.34 will round to 352.3. So that means that that is a range of values in which we will get that that same value. So the probability of that occurring is the cumulative probability, so P uniform, so P U N I F of 352.34, that's the upper bound, minus then P uniform of the lower bound of 352.25. And of course I have to add in my lower bound and upper bound of my uniform distribution in this function. So if I run this, I find that the likelihood that a student gets the exact same question is 0.0. 12857. All right, and lastly, we want to know the value that cuts off essentially the upper 35%. So it says 35% of all values will be greater than what value? This is the exact same value as the 65th percentile. And so we can calculate that using the Q uniform 
command, so Q-U-N-I-F, where we put in 0.65, and A is our lower bound, B is our upper bound, we can run this, and sure enough, we get the value 355.55. So if we look at this on the graph, that is about right there. And sure enough, that looks like about 35% of the data is above that, and 65% of the area is below that. All right, and this is how you can use R to do uniform distribution problems.